Hello everybody and welcome back. Thanks for tuning in to another episode here. My name is Dominic and I'm the host of the Android Factory. Last episode we went ahead and uplifted this simple application here to use Hilt. We introduced Hilt, we talked about constructor injection, what dependencies are, transient dependencies, all that good stuff. So if you missed it, I'll link a card in the top right and we can go ahead and check it out. And in this episode we're going to talk about another popular use case of Hilt and that would be field injection. Uh, here we're making use of Picasso to actually load uh, an image into an image URL into an image view here. It's a pretty good example of something we would want to inject throughout our app. Uh, at the moment we only have one activity so it's not really all that important, but you know if you had multiple activities, multiple fragments, um, many different areas that wanted to load images in, it would be great if we didn't have to build Picasso every time. And, and this one's kind of simple, right? We just have to call Picasso.get. Um, but there are other things like, you know, services if you're using Retrofit um, th that require a little bit more of a construction process. And so it's a good idea to kind of wrap those things up in a singleton pattern or at least a creation pattern that you can guarantee will happen consistently time and time again. So just make your life easier and not necessarily have to worry about if things have been instantiated correctly here, right? So realistically what uh, this code under the hood looks like is we have a Picasso instance here and we declare it by saying Picasso.get, right? So we could just replace this very simply with uh, our Picasso variable. So point is, is if we could get Picasso instance here, if we could get this somehow passed into us, uh, we wouldn't necessarily have to worry about creating it. And instead we could just work with loading it, uh, an image URL into an image view here, right? So if we were able to somehow define uh, our Picasso out here, um, that would make our lives a little bit easier, right? So we'll just say Picasso, and we'll just get rid of the rest of that. And obviously we need to initialize it somewhere along the way, uh, but this is where we can make use of Hilt to actually inject this variable into the activity for us. And so quite simply here, we can actually just annotate this again with at inject. And now we don't have to worry about actually creating the Picasso instance, at least not here. Uh, and the rest of our code can kind of just use it as if it's going to exist there, right? And we've already annotated this with at Android entry point, so this is ready to go. If this annotation was not here, we would actually have to add it um, so that you can use it inside of the activity. Let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. And so after running in here, we get some kind of an error, right? It doesn't actually work. And if we take a look at the error output here, we see something about missing binding, cannot be provided without at inject constructor, or it provides annotation, annotated method here, right? So basically, the problem is that we don't own this class, this Picasso class. Um, the library Hilt here doesn't actually know how to create an instance of Picasso. Unlike other classes that we owned completely, we could just slap at inject constructor on top of these classes, and Hilt would have enough information to actually go ahead and build out our dependency tree and actually uh, create these classes for us. So uh, the error message here really alludes to it around, I don't know where it went, but it says something about a provides method. And so if we go ahead and uh, create a class here, or we go ahead and create a module, kind of similar to the whole dagger idea, if you're familiar with it, we can instruct Picasso, uh, we can instruct Hilt how to actually create Picasso. So I'm just going to go ahead and call this the Picasso module. Uh, we can create it as an object, sure we'll add it to git here. And what we can do is we can actually annotate a particular method here, um, specifically called or annotated with provides, and we can see that it comes from a dagger here, so this should be familiar. Um, and then we can just make a public function here, and normally they start with the word provides, uh, provides Picasso, right? And this function is, as you would expect, going to return uh, an instance of Picasso here, right? So then we can just simply say picasso.get, and now this thing actually understands how to create an instance of Picasso. If there was more configuration here, we could go ahead and actually do that. Um, and you can even pass parameters or, or information into this function to kind of ensure that you're creating it the same way or if you need more information or something along those lines. Uh, so you can get pretty, pretty crazy with it. Now the last little bit here is we need to annotate the module itself with not only the keyword uh, module here, like we would with dagger, um, but we also need to give it something called uh, install in here. And then we need to give it, I believe it's called um, a lifecycle component or, or something along those lines. Uh, it's in the documentation, I can look in a minute. Uh, but we can actually uh, put it inside of the singleton component here. Uh, and then obviously the uh, class there. So basically what we're doing is we're 
we're explaining to Hilt that the Picasso module is going to act as a singleton, right? So this provides function is going to basically be only need to be invoked once and only once throughout the activity or sorry, the application lifecycle. Um, and that's a pretty good idea for something like an image loading library or something to do with maybe your networking layer if you're using retrofit or something along those lines. Um, and I believe that's about it. So now we get this little icon here in uh, next to the number line here. And if we actually click it, we can see the function that Hilt is going to use to actually get the instance of Picasso here. So if we go ahead and run this again, I'm sure this should work. And as you can see here, we have successfully launched the app. When we click uh, load image here, the app functions exactly as we would expect, right? Um, so again, this is just leveraging the power of Hilt, making use of a little bit of annotations. And in this case, we actually needed to tell Hilt how to build something, right? Um, but the beauty of this is now if we need a Picasso instance anywhere in the application, we can simply just inject it uh, into an activity or a fragment, something along those lines, um, that you can then kind of disperse to other areas of the app if you need it to be there. So that's basically it for this uh, episode here. I am going to extend this a little bit, just as like a little bit of a better practice, let's say. Um, but if you made it this far in the video, I'd really appreciate a like. If you are brand new, consider subscribing and just uh, helping me out. I hope this content has been useful for anyone who's been watching it so far. So um, we normally would, we can maybe say like make it a Picasso util, um, but for something like an image loading library, it's pretty popular that you wouldn't want to just use Picasso directly. Um, you obviously can, it does work, but making your life a little bit easier with a Picasso util or some kind of util class around um, these third party libraries that you use is sometimes helpful. So we're just gonna go ahead and uh, get that done for you here. And so I've just created a little helper function here, basically taking in the image URL and an image view, um, and we can actually make use of, you know, kind of, I guess, extracting away the implementation details of Picasso um, from whatever calling class is going to go ahead and, and need it, right? Um, however, one thing that we are going to need here is we are going to need the instance of Picasso. So we can just simply say at inject constructor, we can create a private val uh, Picasso here. And uh, we then can very easily just kind of work with the library inside here, right? So we're going to load the image URL and we're going to have, uh, sorry, uh, into the image view itself, right? Um, then in the activity layer, we don't really need to worry about Picasso, but instead we could just make use of the Picasso uh, util class in here. And then we can do something along the lines of uh, Picasso util dot load image. And then we have an image URL and then we load it into the uh, binding dot image view like so. We'll cut that out. And now we've kind of extracted away the nitty gritty and the details about how to actually, uh, you know, like work with Picasso. Um, and this is super beneficial and super powerful because if let's say down the line, you'd want to, um, instead of using Picasso, upgrade to Coil or start using Glide or something else along those lines. Um, having the art or the work of loading an image in a particular wrapper utility class allows you to basically rip out what library you're using um, and you can just kind of swap things out there in, inside of the util as opposed to having to go into all the places in your app and actually change the you know Picasso.load into this image view kind of deal. Um, just, you know, kind of future proofing yourself and, and maybe making it a little bit better of a design here. Um, but here we have it. We are injecting not just the Picasso instance uh, into our activity anymore. Instead, we're injecting uh, a, a utility class around the image loading library. And you can see here everything works. We obviously do not create a Picasso util that's taken care uh, for us by Hilt. And we tell it, you know, again, at inject constructor. The only dependency here is Picasso but yet because it actually knows um, how to build Picasso based on this module that we've defined here, everything just magically comes together. And that's about it. Uh, in a nutshell, the past, last episode in this one introduced Hilt, talked about dependencies, and uh, not only constructor, but also field injection. So really with those two things, you can kind of make the most with Hilt and take it uh, to, to whatever level you want. I will link the documentation in the description here. Uh, of this video, there is a lot more that you can do. Uh, with Hilt, you can kind of scope things to a little bit more appropriate levels, let's say, if you only want something to live for an activity life cycle or a fragment life cycle, or even within a view model. Um, and you know, all of this is kind of outlined here, but the general concept is the same. Uh, we just kind of build the schema for Hilt and then 
it figures out how to get everything in the right place that we need. So uh, thank you again for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one.